Hi everyone, welcome to this Make a Medic tutorial. In this video we'll be focusing on hypercalcemia. Hypercalcemia is a relatively common electrolyte abnormality and it's defined as a serum calcium concentration of greater than 2.6 millimoles per litre. So to understand why calcium might be high, it's first of all important to understand how it's regulated within the body. So I've divided this slide up into three main sections. On the far right we have serum calcium, on the left, we have the hormones that can affect the serum calcium, and in the middle, we have the site of action of these hormones. So the hormones that regulate calcium homeostasis mainly come from either the parathyroid gland or they're activated within the liver and the kidneys. Regarding the site of action, bone is the main store of calcium within the body, so it can be liberated from the stores in the bone. The GI tract is important in absorbing calcium from our diet and finally the kidneys have a role in excreting calcium. So to begin with, let's talk about parathyroid hormone, which is produced by the parathyroid glands which can be found embedded at the corners of the thyroid gland. So once secreted, parathyroid hormone will increase the resorption of bone and hence it will liberate calcium from these stores. In addition, it has an action on the gastrointestinal tract and it increases the absorption of calcium from our diet. And in the kidneys, it'll lead to a decrease in calcium excretion in the urine and also it'll lead to an increase in 1-alpha hydroxylation, which is a key step in the activation of vitamin D. So all of these measures will result in an increase in serum calcium concentration. So then we have vitamin D, which also has a role in regulating calcium concentration. So the precursor for vitamin D can either come from the diet in the form of ergo or cholecalciferol. It can also be generated from 7-dehydrocholesterol by UV light acting through our skin. So the vitamin D requires several activation steps before it becomes the active form known as calcitriol. So first and foremost, it goes to the liver where it undergoes 25-hydroxylation to become 25-hydroxyvitamin D then that product will go to the kidneys where it undergoes 1-alpha-hydroxylation and then it becomes 1,25-dihydroxyvitamin D, in other words, calcitriol, and that is the active form of vitamin D. So this then has two main effects. So it goes to the GI tract where it can increase the absorption of calcium and it acts within the kidneys itself where it decreases renal excretion. And again, both of these changes result in an increase in serum calcium concentration. As for the clinical manifestations of hypercalcemia, it's famously remembered as stones, bones, abdominal moans, thrones, and psychiatric overtones. So what exactly do each of these mean? So regarding stones, hypercalcemia increases the risk of forming urinary tract calculi, which are usually made of calcium oxalate. The resorption of calcium from the bones increases the risk of fractures. High levels of calcium can also result in dyspepsia. Thrones refer to the changes in toileting habits, so patients may be going to the toilet a lot more frequently and passing large volumes of urine, and they may also become constipated. And finally, high calcium levels can also have some psychiatric effects, so resulting in depression and in some cases psychosis. When investigating hypercalcemia, remembering the physiology of calcium homeostasis is very helpful. So the first thing you do is check PTH because it's such an important hormone in increasing calcium levels. So the results will either be low, normal or high as with any test result. If the PTH is low, it suggests that something else must be causing a high calcium level. And this can be concerning because it's usually suggestive of hypercalcemia of malignancy. I know we talked about how vitamin D is the other hormone that increases serum calcium concentrations. However, it is very rare to have such massively high serum vitamin D concentrations that it can cause hypercalcemia. So generally speaking, if the PTH is low in the context of hypercalcemia, that it's possible that they may have hypercalcemia of malignancy. So as the name suggests, it just means that they have hypercalcemia and is driven by malignancy, but this can happen by a few different mechanisms. So first and foremost, bone metastases from any type of tumour can break down bone and liberate calcium from that bone, resulting in an increase in serum calcium. Some tumours 
notably squamous cell carcinomas of the lung, can produce PTHRP, which is parathyroid hormone-related peptide. It's a hormone that plays a physiological role in an embryo because it helps them steal calcium from their mother. However, it can be expressed ectopically in certain tumours, and it has an action which mimics PTH, so it will result in a high serum calcium. And finally, myeloma is a plasma cell malignancy, which can lead to lytic bone deposits, which again liberate calcium from the bone. If the PTH is normal or high, that's suggestive of primary hyperparathyroidism. So it may seem a bit confusing that the PTH can be within the normal range and that still be considered hyperparathyroidism, but the reason is that PTH should be responsive to serum calcium levels. So in other words, if the serum calcium is high, you'd expect the PTH to be low. And if it isn't low, that's definitely abnormal, and that's usually suggestive of primary hyperparathyroidism. And causes of primary hyperparathyroidism include parathyroid adenomas, hyperplasia, or carcinoma. As for the management, the first step in treating hypercalcemia is aggressive IV fluid resuscitation. This is because calcium is an osmotic substance and it will cause a profound diuresis and patients will be very, very dehydrated. And so they do need rapid, aggressive fluid resuscitation. Moving on from there, it's important to identify and treat the cause. So the fluid resuscitation will bring a temporary improvement in the serum calcium level. However, it's important to identify and treat that cause. So if it's hyperparathyroidism, they may need a parathyroidectomy. If patients are hypercalcemic as a result of bone metastases, bisphosphonates also tend to be used in their treatment as it can reduce the bony pain associated with bone metastases. Thank you.